CES, what caught your attention? Yeah, so folks, uh, this is going to be kind of a, a ruminations. We're going to give you exactly, you know, what did we see? So I, I think the, the, the biggest thing that I saw was this increase in interest for PCs like I haven't seen in probably five or six years. And, you know, I want to separate that from the reality uh, when the business was just uh, hitting big time about three years ago during that during the shutdowns. Uh, but this is about something brand new and it's about the AI PC. And uh, Intel uh, and in uh, Intel and AMD and for a little bit, a little bit, NVIDIA gave uh, effort at, at CES on this topic. Not a whole lot of stuff from uh, Qualcomm because they had their event uh, in, in Maui where they came out with a lot of the content, but that was the biggest a source of industry discussion for me. I mean, it's funny uh, after the day, you know, you you walk by a bar in the Palazzo and you see people from Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, uh, Lenovo, maybe some HP and Microsoft folks in there, maybe some Dell folks, but all in there, the talk was all about AI PC. Uh, I did a uh, did a panel uh, Intel and I had the presidents of of Dell, Lenovo, and HP on there to discuss this, but uh, macro, it was good to see the industry coming together to be able to invest in this. And the way to look at the AIPC is not is don't, don't just start off from what you see now. Okay, now is the start, right? You have Core Ultra. Uh, even AMD uh, had had a release and has has systems on the shelf that has a lot of AI capabilities. This is the beginning and not not the end. I can relatively, pers uh, relatively, uh, with high precision, talk about what this will look about till till now till 2025. But but the TLDR is six month increments. You're going to see uh, new chips, new capabilities, new software, and new experiences uh, hitting hitting here. And I think probably crescendoing in the second half of 2025. But I do believe. That we are going to see a resurgence in the PC market uh, in in likely the second half and fourth quarter, uh, based on all the excitement about it that that quite frankly started today, and you're going to see uh, a big surge in May and June. You're going to see a big surge uh, in October and September uh, for the holiday uh, uh, selling season. So. I would say, yeah, for, first and foremost, and Dan, I'll, I'll just pong it over to you. I have a few other other topics we can talk about, but uh, what, what were your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I've said this a lot now, Pat, but I feel like what we saw was this kind of and inflection. Last year, you, you, you quoted me so well, but the year of the GPU, it was the training year. It was the infrastructure investment in deployment. It was a ton of infrastructure on AI being bought by a small number of companies in order to deploy solutions that ultimately could be monetized. Of course, you know, coolest device, you know, I was on Liz Clayman and I said, what was the coolest thing I saw? I think it's these, these LG or Samsung, I can't remember which one's making it, but there's these transparent TVs. And they're going like in the sensors and the chips are right in the glass. And they're basically completely, uh, you know, completely uh, opaque or, you know, clear, which one's clear, not opaque. Um, and you cannot see the sensors at all in the windows, but you can actually see the content everywhere. I just see so many applications for that in glass. Um, and I think it was just cool. You know, remember when CES used to be about cool, like just seeing things that were just different? Um, well, like there was part of that, as you talked about, right? Like uh, see through OLED. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. To, no, 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 I know. I know that, that exactly what you were talking about. And, you know, even the uh, the Lenovo, I don't know if you saw that, they've got a, a detachable where it, you know, turns into a, you know, you 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 take the display off the PC and it converts from a Windows PC to a, a Chrome tablet or, or, sorry, an Android tablet. Just stuff like that that's visually uh, appealing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so beyond that, um, you know, I think, Pat, you and I came into this knowing what was going to be pretty hot in our space. So there were some really cool sort of like latency free, um, you know, personal assistant type devices powered by generative AI. And that stuff's really cool. I mean, like when you have a, 
assistant, you know, some of them roll around with you. Some of them are more like theoretical in your pocket. They can be everything from your personal trainer, a dietitian, nutritionist. It could be, you know, to someone with dealing with, you know, Intel showed a cool uh, demonstration for people that uh, are deaf and, and, you know, are hearing impaired to be able to get more communication uh, through generative AI. And that stuff's really great. And of course, there's going to be this debate about cloud or prem. What's going to happen in the cloud? What's going to happen on prem? Uh, and when I say on prem, in this case, it's on the device, right? Because we're hearing a ton about this AI PC. In fact, we knew AI PC was going to be a super hot topic. I put a little bit, I'm going to put a little stress back on the OEMs and say, look, I have no doubt, and I agree with Pat, with your notion on stage, you did the Intel event, you had all the chiefs of the biggest OEMs in the world, did a great job. Um, you made you would have made Mr. Rogers proud with that presentation. But the the communication of where value is going to be derived in this AIPC is, still has some work to do. Um, oh, you know, that's why it's the beginning, not the end. It's the beginning. Sure. And it's the beginning because there are uh, those that really do think that with the right silicon design, um, a lot can be done in the cloud with low latency. And of course, with these kind of robot tools, nobody wants to wait. So if you can do zero latency or near zero latency, and I call it near zero is when you don't see latency. Yeah. So when you don't feel latency, in my opinion, there's no latency. It's kind of like how high resolution can a monitor be before your eyes can no longer appreciate the higher resolution. There's a little bit of that going on. But I do think the push to new experiences, new designs, new software, new applications that are going to be powered by not only an MPU, but just the whole chiplet um, and multi, uh, you know, multi semiconductor designs that incorporate, you know, camera technologies and vision technologies and, um, you know, GPU and rendering, et cetera. So there's a ton of that going on, Pat. And of course, I'll just make a really quick pass. Automotive is always cool, you know, but I think it was just more of more software defined vehicles, uh, more sort of stacking of, uh, you know, moving from more black box to custom building blocks. But that's what we've seen Qualcomm doing. Intel's getting their hat back in the ring. Um, you know, NVIDIA's, I think, been half paying attention to automotive. Uh, they kind of slowed their attention to it when the GPU took off. I'm, I'm, they didn't really, the automotive people would be offended by that, but it felt that way. So anyways, I digress. Big topic. We could ramble on for quite a while. Listen, time. Dan, we don't we don't have to, we're not rushing this one because I've got a couple more topics I wanted to hit. Right, well, let me kick it back to you because I kind of just gave you the whole rundown and maybe see if you spark any more uh, any more memories of things that come Yeah, so, you know, CES uh, became the uh, the Detroit Auto Show about a decade ago. Kind of coincidental when nvidia started talking about what it could do inside the car uh actually actually it was 12 years ago um and i remember it uh, really well and everybody's like well what is this the auto show well this year was again about the auto show an entire building dedicated to uh automotive funny tractors right we saw john deere was back again uh and what it did there and a couple couple big statements there so Intel is back in automotive after spinning out, uh, spinning out, doing a soft spin of Mobileye, which we're going to talk about later. And essentially what they did is they committed to commu compute, right? And this theory that, by the way, is not new that we agree with, that we've talked about, which is instead of having 25 ECUs that are incompatible, that have to talk to each other uh, and have a lot of duplication, uh, centralize that compute. Uh, that's Qualcomm strategy as well. And uh, it, it just makes sense. So with all the new IP that Intel has, that's a lot more competitive, adding that to the distributed architecture where they can slot in IP from, let's say, a Ford or a Volvo in, into, into the chip uh, and, and call it uh, a day. Um, a lot of work and a lot of proof that Intel has to show because the 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 view the view out there is that Intel got out of the mart out of automotive and ceded it to Mobileye. Uh, given the troubles that the company was having, uh, it made it made uh, sense uh, overall. Uh, the funny part is that Intel actually kept building and selling products to to automotive companies, but just really didn't talk about it a lot. Right? They ceded it to uh, ceded that conversation to Mobileye. Uh, if you want more information on what Intel's doing, uh, we published a white paper. You can find it in the show notes. Uh, for Qualcomm, right, it was a reaffirmation that, you know, we are becoming the dominant player uh, in, in this market. And while there wasn't a, a lot of, of, of huge news, it was more about 
uh, the uh, the momentum. And interestingly enough, I you know I put out something on X, gets twenty three thousand people uh, to uh, uh, to look at it. So um, you know three hundred and fifty Qualcomm vehicles uh, on the road in it for twenty years, right? It's over seventy five uh, models out there, and and for them it was really it was really a time to 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 say hey we are um we're big and we're bad we don't have huge news to break but don't forget how big and bad we are all right are you done on ces or you want to hit a little bit more maybe just one more maybe just uh, just, just a final note on this is about kind of xr so even though Apple says that that CES is insignificant, they always drop some of their biggest news. And one of the bigger news stories during that was that uh, Apple Vision Pro will be available on February 2nd. It was literally the only thing that you could see and heard of uh, on, on a Monday. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Qualcomm brought out its new 4K per eye uh, XR2 platform. This is a big deal, folks. 4K per eye is when it gets real, the experience. You can do that uh, at the right power budget. Uh, it, it gets quite, quite uh, compelling. We'll talk about Rabbit next time, if we even have to. Yeah, so I, I did think it was interesting. I did have a bit of a thematic VR is back, XR is back. And look, you know, I said Apple is not always as innovative as people give credit for. It actually isn't, you know, people always say they're so innovative. They were pretty late with XR, but I think what they do successfully accomplish that so many other companies don't is they make markets. And yeah, so they were 10 years late with smartphones, you're right. Right, but when they have their smartphone, it was kind of, the, they, they, they timed the inflection point. And so if they're right, as they've historically been, they're timing the inflection of where we go from very small niche sort of early adopter use cases, fringe use cases to high volume. Their pricing doesn't really enable that, but I think they're also maybe creating this little bit of what I would call buffer zone for the app developers to create enough apps and usable things so that when they do drop a $1,500 headset at some point in the next two years, yeah. scale can come up with it. 